All right, present is Ted Carlson. Here. David Nesbitt. Here. Terry Kelly. Here. Marsha Olson. Here. Deanna. Here. And Lisa Toussaint. Here. We have a quorum. Turn it over to the chair. All right, very good. Uh, next is approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any suggestions for moving things on the agenda? We might want to move since uh, Mark is here. We might want to move the Silver Ridge apartment thing yeah. earlier, right? So he can be on his way. So I would suggest maybe moving that uh, right after uh, approval of the previous minutes and before the consent agenda and get him out of the way. That's not right. So we'll yeah. move 6D. We'll move that right after 4. Any other? Um, Anything else? We've got a time sensitive or a time certain one right after 11:30. Uh, and D, which one's that? That's the, the uh, Michelle McNulty, the new okay, planning director, will be come here about 11:30. That's going to be after 11:30. All right. Does anyone else have any other recommendations for the agenda? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda? Aye. Those no. Aye. Okay. Agenda passes. Let's move on then to minutes from the previous meeting. Do we have minutes? From we the previous don't. Meeting? Okay. Well, that's easy. This is meetings just roll on the lawn then. Um, let's talk to then um, Mark Tegway. Tegway. Well, thanks for coming, Mark. Please come on up. Uh, slide a chair up. Uh, okay. And Terry, we have a, a sheet of notes that he provided, so can we hand that out to everybody? Okay, so I have a sheet of notes. Let's see. No, let's see. Is that, it's the last one. Oh, yeah, that is it. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody have one? Okay. No, that was addressed to David. Um, oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, very good. That's okay. It was actually yet another day, but I talked to <laughs> 15 people before. Fortunately, I got all of the D's. <laughs> okay. Should we read it for five minutes or two minutes or? I suppose so. Yeah. Let's 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 read this. And Do you think that'd be helpful if we read through it? Sure. Give okay. us back up. Yeah. I add one thing. I, I know police are allowed to take home vehicles. I don't know who else does. Several of the fire command officers, NLP, the higher echelon, the public works, so they all have uh, informants in this one. They can't take home vehicles. So there is quite a few. Okay. Um, because, uh, I think you could do. Just about every department, but they did one or two. Uh, okay. Which vehicles did you have? Any? Any. Any. Right. Oh, did you have when you? Yeah, I mean, there was height restrictions because of covered parking, but yeah. other than that, yeah. yeah. I mean, initially this started because I did have a police officer. Police there. officer. Um, oh. But by going through that requirement, it's uh, the uh, police officers codes say that open yeah. to any city vehicle and I have no problem with that at all. So but that's what sparked it. And he that person's no longer there. Correct, yeah they they found a house. <laughs> <laughs> we pay them too much. <laughs> um, I have questions for them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, do you charge how much do you charge? If I rent an apartment there, how much would you charge extra for a covered parking for me? If if you it's they are optional. If you wanted a covered parking, it would be fifty dollars. Okay. 
per month. But but per month, fifty dollars a month. Right. But there is parking other places. Correct. Available free of charge. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, those other parking spaces are are not covered. Uh, as well as the weather, also there's no plugins, and there is times um, that those parking spaces are full, so it would be overflow parking out on the street. What about the uh, liability? If if I have a, a, a community has a inmate, mm -hmm. that's the visual there. It, it, it's penalized. Can it what? Gets vandalized. I think that would be uh, would be the same as parking most other places. Uh, there wouldn't be. It would be uh, uh, auto insurance, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't. I mean, you would have to. Uh, I mean, if the building fell on the car, then I'm sure that would fall under the, you know, the our liability. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I can't, I can't honestly give you a legal interpretation of who would be responsible. Typical for if somebody vandalizes a vehicle, from my understanding, that would fall under. Yeah, well, it's here, it's uh, this is um, you indicate that certain things are not covered, you know, but wouldn't it be advisable to put a disclosure in there? Then, if you, yeah, Ted, I would that, that you wouldn't be responsible for any damage to the vehicle. I could, Ted, can I say I'm, I would assume that his attorney will advise him that he should get some yeah. type of release. Yeah, okay. Right. I'm sure in, in, in our in the lease contract with the resident, um, I can almost certainly say that there is information in there about you know. Parking use of the parking lot. Um, do these vehicles need to be uh, uh, have some type of uh, no, no, no. 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 license plate? Yeah. This is something a gift. Is I, a I'm gift? I'm open fit? to if you have any suggestions, directions. If you say that this would only be for ones that have municipal license plates, I'm fine with that. If it's a government plate, I'm fine with that. If it's if you say that they have to show, you know, the title to me to uh, to offer that space, I'm fine with that. Um, I'm I'm totally open to suggestions or directions. Well, my view is, is that, you know, strictly speaking, you're not covered by the code of ethics, right? You're not yeah. subject yeah. to these provisions. So it would be, it would be the employees who'd be taking, you know, who would be <coughs> utilizing these parking spaces. I would interpret that to be them accepting a gift <coughs> from you because That's they're getting something of value too. from yeah. you for at no cost. And so to some degree, it would be sort of on a case-by-case -case basis. The basic rule that we have is that municipal employees can't accept gifts if their job duties are such that it would make it look like there's maybe some sort of quid pro quo going on here, right? So if it's, uh, you know, so if it's, you know, you can imagine if someone's like a building inspector for the city and your building is up for inspection, that's, that's not going to fly, right? On the other hand, if it's, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe a police officer might be okay. Um, I can certainly imagine all sorts of people. The clerk's office, right? Someone who just happens to work in the clerk's office. You have no business in the in the clerk's office. They take advantage of the parking spot. Not a problem. So I think it's really going to be on a on a case by case basis. And so I, I think the main thing is that you would need to advise people who are going to use these spots that that they are subject to the code of ethics and that you know unless it's obvious that there's no potential sense at all in which to give, because remember it's about appearances too, right? It's like how would it look to the public um, that they would probably be best off checking either with D, the city's ethics officer, or the board itself just to kind of make sure, like, is this okay? And then taking advantage uh, of your offer. Certainly, um, if I can address because this, your example is brought up a couple of times through, um, it would be no benefit to me have to have the 
building inspector or fire inspector at my property every single day, 24 hours a day. <laughs> um, so that would not be, you know, that would be, I would have to make sure to step up my game a thousand percent. You know, it's like, okay, we need to change that, you know, that, that sprinkler head You don't need to admit that this, we this meeting is being taped. <laughs> <laughs> not to offer you legal advice. <laughs> no, I mean, so, uh, yeah, so I do understand that. Um, but we would be basically in a situation of being inspected because they would be required to point out anything and flag anything that is in violation. So it's nece not necessarily an advantage to me to have a daily inspection. Um, but with that said, I understand that there could be, you know, a, uh, uh, an, uh, an appearance. Um, but uh, in reference to your point about them receiving a benefit, um, technically they're not necessarily receiving a benefit. The benefit would be toward the vehicle, toward the city. Um, granted, they would be, it would be a benefit for them that they wouldn't have to plug off, would clean the snow off in the wintertime. It would be the benefit to them that the municipal vehicle would be plugged in um, and ready to go and they wouldn't have to sit there and warm it up for 20 minutes or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so any, any benefits to them would in fact be a benefit toward the city would be a benefit toward the municipal property so well and also the fifty dollars a month too right is, well that's what we would like to not charge right now if they so wanted to put a space for their own vehicle um right. and in this case he did have uh the police officer did have his own vehicle at fifty dollars a month but introducing right. the, the other vehicle now that would be something that you know as citizens we wouldn't be having to pay additional for an extra vehicle and that's where I'm just trying to keep that playing field balanced. But you can imagine like the public perception, right? Like my wife parks in the garage in the winter and I park in the driveway. And when I come out in the morning on a snowy day, I don't say, oh, my vehicle has suffered over the night. I say, oh, my God, I've got to clear this snow and it's cold and my car is cold and this and that. And the public would perceive it as a person, at least in part, as a benefit for the person mm -hmm. that their car is in this covered spot, that it's plugged in, ready to go, and that they've gotten it for free when other people have to pay $50 a month right. for the same for the same benefit. So I think there would be a, a benefit for the employee and in, in many cases it might be just fine but it would be on a case by case basis. But yeah. it's not a situation Terry like we're looking at this practice if you know if Mark wants to offer it we're not looking at a practice that would blanketly create a problem for no. No. employees. It's really a case by case thing. So yeah. he can offer it and the employees need to understand that they're obligated to comply with the ethics requirements concerning gifts and everything that you've articulated about when they're okay and when they're not. Yeah. So really, the Does practice is okay, I think. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's not like a situation where he's triggering some type of you know problem for the municipality. Can we accept maybe uh, one little hypothetical, like a police officer? Mm -hmm. Because one, uh, it might be helpful for Mark if I were to contact current police, although they'll no normally defer to whatever I say, uh, uh, if, 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 in the event of a police officer. Uh, could we have some discussion about that, or do you mind? It's a hypothetical, but yeah. that would be one Logical, area. Logical, hypothetical, likely. Um, uh, what do people think? Ted's a former police captain. Um, uh, we certainly had concerns well, in the past, you might recall, the, the the, uh, the company that wanted to do uh, the taxes for free, tax right. preparation for police officers for free. And, and they we, were the chair massagers too. Yeah, well, that's right. And we had concern. you might recall that this board had concerns about that, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, on the idea that, you know, the police officer is getting something for free. Is there some way in which, whether it's pulling the person over or parking violation, or, you know, some sort of violation that there's at least, you know, again, at least the appearance of a possible, you know, undue influence created by by the gift. What do you think about this kind of case, Ted? So it's well, covered the, parking, which helps the vehicle. They're certainly true, but the, yeah. the police officer, him or herself, would also probably like the covered parking. The, <laughs> in the home car, the original home car, uh, when we went to that originally, it was to get police cars mm -hmm. in different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They weren't to park them in a garage. Mm -hmm. They were make sure they were visible. 
Now I don't know what that Yeah, no, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Because it adds oh, yeah. uh, a presence right. yes. in <laughs> neighborhoods all over the whether, city. Whether right. your covenant parking is visible to the public or is it? Right, uh, it would actually increase visibility of the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, by being there as opposed to okay. so it's not like putting it in the garage or something like that. Correct, right. Yeah. It's yeah, it's carports, it's not yeah, it's not a garage. So, so that would be yeah. The, yeah, there's a balancing benefit to yeah. the to the neighborhood yeah. and the apartment building. Yeah. But you know, I I think it would uh, like you would say on a case by case basis, you know if if he had somebody moving in, so okay, you get free parking, that sort of thing. But here's a form you have to fill out and turn it into the clerk's office. And then it's disclosure sure. gift form. Yeah. And then that next a gift form. And then we'll decide and call you up and say, hey, like, like you said, that if the billing inspector or something like that, you know, we'll say, no, he can't have it. He can't have it. And then you tell him, no, no, he can't have it. And that would be yeah, more, be my more timely than this yeah. process was because he had to find who to talk to yeah. and make a bunch of calls. Yeah. But it would be, be nice to have a police car sitting there or a fire, fire, mm -hmm. you know, because people feel for safe, more safe when, in the community when there's Correct. something like that. You know. But I would say that the burden in, in offer I don't think would have to be on you. I think you could no, offer this, right. but I think you would need to make clear somewhere like, oh, by the way, I talked to the people at the city and they do want you to check at least with the ethics officer about whether this is okay. Then it's on the employee. It's, they're the ones who are subject yeah. to this code. So it's up to them to contact D or contact the board, make sure it's okay. And then so, you know, all you know, on your end, the only burden on your end would, I think, would be, if you wouldn't mind, to just... For city employees who are thinking of taking advantage of your offer, to just say, "Oh, by the way, you do. I checked it out, and you do need to check with the city to make sure it's okay." Okay. Yeah, I, I don't want to put put out an offer that's going to get somebody in trouble. Right. Same that's here. Absolutely. Right. That's right. why so that's the, you know I'm yeah. here to see where I would need to go with this. We're in the same way, and as Lisa said. I don't see anything sort of like upfront that this is like so beyond the pale that we would say, oh gosh, no, you can't do this at all. I can imagine many, many cases in which it would not be problematic at all. I can also imagine some cases where at least the appearance would be problematic, right? And so that's what makes me think that it needs to be on a case by case basis. And it can be fairly timely. I can imagine a number of these cases, the, the employee could just simply get in contact with D and, and D could eyeball it up and say, oh yeah, this is not a problem, or this obviously is a problem. The board's not gonna buy this. And then the only ones that would get more of drawn out would be those gray area kind of cases where D might say, oh, I'm a little, I think it's okay, but maybe the board might, you know, something like that. So if I can pose a, an, an additional question or guidance uh, on this. In situations like for the police department, where their requirements say that the uh, city has to be offered to all city vehicles um, and get approval from the chief of police, I don't know where I would go from here for that. Because if I don't have permission for all city vehicles, I don't know what to present to the chief of police as to get permission from him. Um, yeah, oh. e e yeah. Each department has their, can have their own little rules, and the, yeah. the police have strong rules. Um, but there's an exception uh, that the police are probably relying on that I've trained them that if it's offered to everybody, yeah, you your guys can do it too. You don't have to run that by me. So they're using that exception. It may be that I simply meet with the chief and say, "What do you think about this?" And I can give you that. You know, in general. Oh, okay. So uh, that I can try to do some of your groundwork. Oh, okay. But they're entitled to their own policies. In the past, they were very, very strict. And Ted's yeah. day, they zero gifts. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Now they right. can do some. So why don't I do that for you, Mark? I'll, okay, uh, okay. I'll approach the, um, the top three police okay. and find out what they have to say. Yeah, not a problem. So I'll be so so able to run around trying to find <laughs> Oh, no, I actually, um, yeah, everybody was very helpful. Yeah. They just didn't know exactly who would handle sure. this. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. and then, Mark, you're welcome to stay if you're interested. It's just one thing that you people have to leave. Yeah, I, I don't 
Uh, it's been interesting so far. I've got residents. I was going to say, yeah, you're also free to get. <laughs> but thanks for making the time to come. Yeah, I heard about a spring. Oh, thank you. Thanks. All right, very good. Well, let's take a look then. What is our next item? Now I think we move into our consent agenda. What is she here for? It's a student at uh, Terry's just watching. Just she just wanted to see how the board works. Yeah. 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 Kind of friendly citizen. Yeah. 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 Oh, D, I got your packet. All right. Let's see what we've got. So, um, so five uh, A. It looks like we've got what? No requests yeah, for gift acceptance. So, what have we got? We've so, it's just got these gift ones that we handed out to you. So, it's just the gift ones, and oh, we handed those out oh, to you already. Right. Here they are. Yep. Okay. And I think there may have been others, but they pulled the ones that seem to be above our rules. Wow, and we just finished the school year. This is all we have? Three. Oh. So, Chair, which one do you want us to look at? Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, let's see. Should we take a look at Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Okay. And by the way, he left a message. Please call me after you've made a major decision with the clerk's office. So he's he actually is sitting on his gift. Ten dollars. Oh man, you're killing me. Do we care if uh, um, this student has graduated, yeah, or, uh, yeah, or is it? I can't remember. We were pretty yeah. black and white, weren't we? You know, but all of these here. I mean, the regulation states that how they can accept it and what they can accept, and all of these are above the fifty dollars. And, and yeah. you know, and they should know that. Mm -hmm. What's the, and what's the I mean, there's one wow. for two hundred fifty bucks. I know. For two hundred dollars. It's a couple of dollars. Give me Raven gift. You know, okay. Wow. And <coughs> the one for sixty dollars. You know, now it, this is interesting, everybody. If you notice on the top. This is a request for gift exception by a public servant because we had put in, if you look at the first page of these things, the exception, that little paragraph toward the bottom, mm -hmm. that we could make exceptions if it didn't violate any of the other rules. And boy, this is problematic. I guess I, did we really mean this for money versus someone gets a fur thing from, I mean, so that's the, conf that we've created a confusion here by this exception that we put into the code. Well, that that was, if I if I may recall, that was for a homemade item like a, you know, I, you know, the wife knitted a, a sham or something like that, or a homemade gift, and you know, but then even though it paid me a little bit more, but not not near this much, you know, but these are all cash cash deals, and they're. Not for designated for, the, we would say then the BTA and then be able to mm -hmm. buy stuff for the classroom or something like that. You know. Well, and, and at least these, these first few, they're before the end of the school year, right? I mean, and so I think that's one of the the possible exceptions that we've talked about. That if you you know got a gift a month or even a weeks after the students graduated, and so they're not your student anymore, and you're not expecting to have their sibling or anything like that. Where's the downstream effect for the teacher? There really isn't any. Mm -hmm. But this, in some ways, these are the, these are the worst case scenarios that we have in mind. Right? These are just like a week or two before final grades for the year are assigned and you're getting a $250 gift card 
from a parent of a student, right? I mean, that's exactly the kind of... Well, when did school year end? So. It's 521, 522. Yeah. 525 is the last yeah, I, Oh, I, 525 yeah, is the last day of school. So school ended. Yeah, no, no, it, it was even... It was, it was like the last 23rd, I think, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is the 23rd. It was before the 23rd. I think grades were out by then. Yeah, I think oh, grades yeah. are out. Yeah, well, at least for my kid, they were. I don't know. You know right now that I think about it, yeah, I'm still yeah, like, yeah. I still think in East Coast terms. I think of school ending the first five twenty-five. Yeah, exactly. right? I think okay. these yeah. are all handed in after the school year ended. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 let's see. Well, this one was accepted five twenty-three. Yeah. Oh, so the oh, first oh, one was Olympics in Poland is 523. Oh, I'm looking at the Tracy K's one is Tracy K's one, the airline voucher? Oh, my word. Yeah. What do you do with that airline voucher? It's a, a random drawing. drawing for a teacher appreciation. 524. But it's, yeah, estimated value of $500. Yeah, Lisa, so did you get grades on five? Like, or grades? Maddie did you actually got grades earlier. Did she? Mm -hmm. Most oh, of the okay. schools, because, because of the Zangle system, get yeah. grades right away. Get them. No. So like they're like they week. finished on them. I think it was a Wednesday, didn't they, or a Thursday? Wednesday. Wednesday. And then okay. the teachers had, I think, another. <coughs> you know, to yeah, they had a day. Like an in-service kind of. Uh, but yeah. the kids all got their grades. Like oh, I don't know. Okay. Do you know Zangle? Right. Zangle yeah. is a computerized system, yeah. and every single grade, yeah. every, yeah. most okay. schools are yeah. right up to point. You know. I mean, I think many got this, but not all. Because there's so little that goes on the last few weeks of school, they just kind of hurry down and go to wow. Take next. Okay. But, I, but, but I like the high schools have their finals oftentimes that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, yeah. so their grades would not be in. So their grades would be more likely, <coughs> potentially, at least arguably, to potentially be influenced by some Yeah. Yeah, so if we look at... Yeah. Uh, the, deal, the, 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 the exception that I, I see mm -hmm. is this crazy crepes on the $500 um, last year life voucher. Now that was a random drawing, and that was given by the PTA. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one's, no, I think that one's totally okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 so that's why that, what I think is meant mm -hmm. by the, by the, exception, you know, yeah. any exception. Okay, where is that one, and, and I'll flag it for us for later. Here, why don't you flag that one that, uh, with the blue, that means okay. So why don't we start with Jeffrey? Let's start with Jeffrey uh, Bevier, Bevier. Um, yeah, it's a sixty dollar card. He gets it on five twenty four. He does teach at Polaris, so he might have high schoolers, right? Yep. But we don't yeah. know. No, it goes particular. all the way up to high school. Yeah. End of year Levison family appreciation. And home. Huh? Is that home run usually a high school thing? Feels like a high school or middle school thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a lot of information about the. Yeah, and so yeah, the, the key is there is you know where grades you know had he already assigned grades. At that but time. it's very likely that this student will again be in Polaris next year because it goes K through twelve. So isn't that your concern too? Yes. Well, I mean, well, especially if is you know would this teacher potentially Continue. be having this student it's at some around. other point in the future? And if the answer is yes to either the student or a sibling. Then, then there's a concern, you know, especially since it goes over the fifty dollar limit. Mm -hmm. It yeah. needs to be pretty squeaky clean, even though it's only ten dollars. It's you know, mm -hmm. it needs to be pretty clean. Otherwise, so if the right. student were as a, a graduating twelfth grader, no siblings at Polaris, mm -hmm. we're good to go. Yeah. Uh, so we don't. This have is this, this is troubling to me um, because when we start considering when the gift is given relative to when the grades were given relative to who's graduating when, relative to who's coming back next year, who may not be coming back next year. How, how many grades does this, does this particular school have? I mean, we are entering into a whole level of speculation on every single one that comes in, if we're gonna include that as a determining factor. And I want to do it, but, but I'm looking at these like, I don't know what the grades were. I have no idea when they issued grades. I have no idea what kind of influence this could possibly have or not. There was a reason we set it at, 50, <laughs> or wanted to set it lower, but there's a reason it's at 50, and I and I hesitate <laughs> opening up that consideration uh -huh. because right. now we're like I have no idea what this you know when the grades were given yes, at any given school it could be totally different. Can I ask you guys so the way that our gift section is written, you know, we have the examples. Those are those like gifts, safe harbors. The safe harbors. Yeah. So we know the 50 dollars is okay. 
But then we have the general rule that if you don't fall within a safe harbor, you fall within the general rule, which is, I think, why we are where we are, which basically says, you know, public servant can accept a gift from an individual or entity with interest that may be substantially affected by the performance of the person's vision under circumstances where, you know, there's one person would be cost. So in a way, we are sort of, by virtue of the way our gift section is written, necessitates this type of sort of fact-specific inquiry. And, and, you know, you're absolutely right. We don't, we don't get all the information that's we really don't necessary have, in order to do that. We don't have a safe harbor that says you know, if it's after graduation then your child could never possibly have that teacher again, exception. Well, right? these to me, well, the way I look at it, David, is like it's clear that it's okay if it's $50 or less. Right. But if it's more than $50, then you're into the general rule, which necessitates a fact-specific inquiry. Is that what everybody intended? Right. Or did everybody, did folks really on this board really intend that when it comes to school stuff, because there's so many of them, and we can't possibly, unless these folks know what our analysis really entails, which they know, there's so many of these, you're just going to get, you're going to be, you know, in a situation where you've got to go track down all the relevant factual information, which, you know, we're really surmising right now. Um, do, do we really intend to have the general rule apply to teacher gifts more than 50? And I'm kind of hearing from you, David, that maybe. Well, I don't know if we want to go down that road. Yeah. I agree with your yeah. analysis completely. Yeah. But the, the, if you remember, when we have a stack like that I know. Mm -hmm. in here because of that. It was, that's why right. we changed the rule. That's what and, David said. And mm -hmm. to me, the reason we changed the rule was this particular one, like yeah. with Tracy Craves, where $500 last year. You know, that's a, an exception. Mm -hmm. And that falls under the seven. But these others don't fall under that. No, and there's no question. I would love, I want, I want, <coughs> I want teachers to get these gifts, if it's at all possible. I mean, I really want, but that's the whole reason we got here. We opened the box. Yeah, yeah it was because we opened the box before, and then we were getting nice, right. and, and then we got the fur coats, and the diamond earrings, and the, yeah. the, the what, $2,000 trips, and the, whatever was coming in. Yeah. You know, I, it's they'll remember, though, at least a lot, what was particularly offensive, you know, or troubling about those, a lot of those were in the middle of the year, around no the questions. holidays, and where it's no clear questions. that it's there's going to be at yeah. least an like appearance of an implicit right, so you have a whole yeah. other semester to go. Right. a whole yeah. other semester to go. I right? understand. I mean, these, but we have let some go in the past, or, you know, that were given in, like, June and July, you know, and the yeah. person made clear this is a graduating student, right. and we were like, oh, okay, there's no downstream influence. Well, the, rule, the rule clears this one. We don't You're know right. If, if there's a downstream, because if I have two kids in there, one's graduating this year, and then yeah. we, we, we don't, don't have yeah. I mean, $50 gifts with every year, $250 gifts with every year, I've got another, and that teacher knows that I got another mm -hmm. sibling. Mm -hmm. uh, Coming in now. So yeah. I ask you guys, like Todd, you um, you guys remember the old days with your big stuff, <laughs> but wasn't at least in part the safe harbor intended to cut down on some of this? Because sometimes you oh, yeah. people come to you with you know under fifty dollars, and so they can be so so essentially the safe harbor has cut down on things. But now oh, we're looking yeah. at you know what was what, that's really my question is what was the intent? Was the intent to not allow the general well, rule to okay, actually apply? Because I drafted all that. Is yeah. I advocated mm -hmm. the safe harbors so it would eliminate mm -hmm. 18 questions right. I get a week. Right. That let's decide what Which we can. Mm -hmm. And I think I also advocated for this, but I said, but look, give me a little bit of flexibility. But looking at this, there's no standards. Mm -hmm. So it's not helpful. And I, w I have to tell you, I was thinking of unusual gifts or that. Uh, well, because I, I, we couldn't possibly think standards. of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. We, we wanted yeah. one catch all yeah. in case it didn't fall into these safe yeah. harbors because you so can't, was that, it, there was never an intent. You can't imagine. Probably to allow a $500 yeah. gift <clears throat> as an exception. There's, right. But, but having said that again, uh, this paragraph yeah. isn't helpful because it doesn't provide the public or us with standards. Well, well, and to get back. I come in and in tell us that you know, that was for the teacher to buy stuff for the classroom. Fine. Give it to the PTA, and the PTA buys the phones. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, well, we, we, we give them a path to go, to, yeah. to go yeah, down. Yeah. To, to get back so to, to, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead, yeah, I was just to get back to Lisa's 
to Lisa's point, the, the exception paragraph at the bottom that says the board may grant an exception for things that fall outside this code, which would go to David's point that we don't really have to grant these exceptions. That's not actually in the code, it appears to I me. Thought right? it I thought it was. I don't know. The next page after Is it the page after that? So yeah. let's see. If it's in the code, then there. And is, but isn't it the truth, Terry, that if you don't fit within a safe harbor, you still have the general rule, yeah. which yeah. is sort of F. akin to the exception that's articulated in this form? Isn't that kind of what we're trying to do? Well, and I think also that reservation for exceptions are stuff like Mark's thing or, yeah. you know, unusual yeah. things. It wasn't meant to be, you can add $50 to the $50 safe harbor. So it's, certainly that was not our intent. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I have a problem with all of them except that one. Mm -hmm. they, uh, for the last three lines, what was the drawing? Jim's not big here. Well, there is something that you know, David, like you know, in terms of just in terms of the logistics of it, that if we do start granting these, we are going to get back to having a ton of these requests at the end of the year. Like, because what will happen now is everyone will just file, right. not everyone, but people will just file for exceptions, right? And because they say, well, oh yeah, just send it off to the board. They grant exceptions as long as you get it on. And I'm concerned that if if we start accepting some but not others, um, it it's going to look random from the outside. Right? Because we can't explain. Well, this was the 28th when it was provided because the grades were given on the 27th. This one was provided on the 26th. And we can't explain all of that every time. And so a person recipient can walk in the hall and be like, You got your $200 gift, gift certificate and I had to hand mine back? Like, this is ridiculous. Like, that would be my impression if I were a teacher. And that makes this whole process look suspect. Yeah. It's problematic. At one point, we did sort of follow-up calls, yeah. and I'm not advocating that, no, but, no, I know. but you know, because yeah. was was something like this, you you could have it. It was like you know, other siblings, right? Uh, although they're not going to remember data grades, but maybe they do. There's probably about four things that would sanitize mm -hmm. this. But a checklist? No, we can create a checklist now. We check all the boxes. There. No, I don't. I no, mean, no, no, I'm not advocating. Yeah, no, that. I know. I'm just saying yeah. that was the past. The reason we we went to that fifty dollar. I know. Agreed on the fifty dollars. To make it clean, yeah. Well, we agreed on zero, remember that? Right. And then that, we got overridden on that issue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Teachers. But uh, anyway, I, but I, I can't support any of them. Yeah. Uh, other than that one. Yeah. Uh, the drawing one. The drawing one. The drawing one. So you guys just really, what I'm hearing the board really intended and what they want to do again is really just have the gift, the safe harbor really applied. It's $50 or less. Occasional gift or meal worth $50 or less. And if there's any monetary, you know, obviously it's something that can be easily traceable monetarily. That's more than 50 forget it. You know, it's also well, even if it's end of the year, even if, you know, all those other factors, because that, that's really what folks intended, because otherwise you get into this case-by-case yeah. -case fact specific thing, which while it may make sense to us, we might have our own little standards unless they're articulated somewhere for the public to see it kind of might undermine confidence in our process because people well, may perceive it as more arbitrary than it really is. I think so. Well, the other thing could be a potential, if we really like, one of it could be a potential code change in other safe harbor right. yeah. under the school things could be end of the year gifts after, I mean, but are we right. going to get that specific in our yeah, code, I mean, you know? Yeah. So, so it's hard too because yeah. these are probably you know like the last day of school or one of the last days of school like and everybody walks school. in and they just drop gift. stuff off. Yeah. I get it, but you know what? It could also limit it to fifty dollars and not have a problem. Yeah. Well, I got my right. coffee card for forty-seven dollars. If you're, if you're a teacher, Claudia I had it, a little ten percent bonus. I didn't want to go over fifty. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I if you're a teacher, you bring my kids and I come in there uh, in April, say. Uh, I am. Um, I bought some gift gift cards for you for the end of the year. That I'm going to give you at the end of the year. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. So I, who knows when they when they and why do we want to get into that? Yeah. I don't know. 
Uh, so I say I, it, this is one of the most difficult things for me because I want teachers to have these gifts. You know, yeah. you want. I don't. I don't want to interfere with people who really appreciate their teachers. And yeah. Well, and at a purely theoretical level, again, yeah. what's the ethical concern? It's the downstream effect that might create an implicit bias on the part of the teacher. And we could imagine cases where, if this is a graduating student and it was given on the last day yeah. after grades, and then at least theoretically, right. it's yeah. not an ethics. But it's not. I mean, it might. You know, forget the law for a second, like, is it unethical? No, because there's no downstream effect. There's not even an appearance of a downstream effect. It gets given after the students walked out the door, basically. And so from a pure theoretical level, it would be nice to review these and to have a form, maybe, maybe revise the form such that it lays out, give us the information we need about what are the potential downstream effects? Are you for plan it, you know, might you have the student again? Are they going to be graduating? Is there a sibling involved? Blah, blah, blah. But it is true from the logistics standpoint, that means I would expect us to start getting a ton of these again. And with no, a lot but just be the year end gifts, I think, would be the big thing. I think during the middle of the year, gifts are just not that many. Yeah, the middle That's of the year that is that going to be a downstream. There's, not, there's always going to be a downstream effect, so we're right. not going to, yeah, so those would be easy still. Right, right. So, I mean, at least from a purely like you know ethical standpoint, it would be nice to review them on a case by case basis because like I could see some that would be over fifty and then as Lisa says are still consistent with our basic rule. Yeah, and the principle is really the ethical principle that we're getting at that we want to avoid those potential downstream effects. You know, it's not that clear reading this either. We've carved out that fifty dollars or less um, exception for teachers. But we it, we did that for every. Uh, yeah, it's under small gifts. No, I see that. I see that. Um, I mean, I like the idea. I don't think it's going to open up the entire world mm -hmm. to just have the year end ones. You know, that would be one of the things. Well, all that. I, I, I disagree. With that. Wait. So, what are you what are you proposing? Do you well, I like Terry's idea of uh, a modification to the form. But what I would do, I mean, right here, I was going to volunteer. As I, when if we're rejecting these, which I think we're about two seconds from doing that, that well, I don't know. Um, that uh, I write a letter to Todd Hess at the school district and say, look, this is a problem with these. Is we don't know these standards. Uh, Perhaps we you can we could meet with you and decide whether you know a, a form change and maybe not incorporate it into a code change, but that mm -hmm. we need to have these pieces of information. And again, I, I think I, I I don't know if everybody heard that Barbara wanted to reject these because the the school district didn't sign off on them. Oh, okay. And that well, may have been just an end of the year thing. Oh, well, and, and even even the end of the year. All oh, right. Uh, another problem is that. Uh, I'm a teacher, and you have a child at graduating, mm -hmm. and you give a hundred dollar gift certificate. Well. And about two weeks later, I come to you and say, "Hey, my son's trying to get into University of Washington, yeah, and he yeah, needs a letter of support." Yes. You're going to write that letter of support, yeah. no question about mm -hmm. it, because he give you yeah. a, give you a, a that's a good point. A bonus. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it, it's not okay. end of the year. Is yeah. <laughs> okay, but yeah, no, yeah. Though, is yeah, that, is that an official municipal duty? Though? Right. <laughs> well, letters, you're writing in your capacity as the teacher. Yeah, you're writing as a teacher. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, right. <laughs> you did that one. Sixth grade teacher is probably not going to be writing the recommendation yeah. for the child to get into Harvard, but the high school teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. well, that, so, that teacher is the uh, coach of uh, our team. Could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so, so many I mean, there. things we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, if I you're going to go in that direction, then I... I can make a motion that we send all of them back except that one, and with a letter of explanation that $50 or less. Mm -hmm. And we let go at that. Because if we do anything else, we're going to get credit with it. And... That wasn't the reason we, we we finally agreed on mm -hmm. on the fifty dollars, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with the assembly and all of this. When we met with them, that was an agreement we, we set on. And you know, I I, I just can't support it. Okay, that's my motion. Anybody want to second it? <laughs> Do have a second for this? 
I second it. Okay. So the motion is to yeah. kick all the uh, to reject these, right? With the exception of the raffle from the PTA. Yeah. Okay. So all those. Yeah. Any more discussion? Yeah. Any more discussion yeah. from anyone? You know, it is a you know Ted. Now that you mention it, you know, I guess that is right. The, you know, the reference. You know, I suppose there's a variety of things that teachers could do in regards to a student even after they've graduated for some time, right? I mean. I'm, I'm sure there's a policy, you know, at least at the university, grades can be changed for another semester yeah. after. So that would be that would that would mean for us the end of the following fall semester. Uh, there's probably a similar policy for for uh, ASD, and then there's yeah, there's um, but there's a reference. If it's a coach, then there's a variety of things that the coach might be able to do to help. Uh, help a student that we uh, would they do that otherwise if they hadn't gotten that large gift? Well, again, we, the point is precisely we don't, the public shouldn't have to say, I don't know, it looks kind of suspicious. You know, that, that's yeah. the point. So I guess I do, I, I yeah. hadn't thought about that. That is a worrying thing. We and there's really you carve out an exception for only sixth graders moving to seventh grade, yeah. right? Because everybody <laughs> else, <laughs> right, to a different school. I mean, uh, yeah, but the way they, even there, the way they move to the school. They might teach them. I know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just such a slippery slope. I, I think, yeah. And you know what? All they had to do was keep it to $50. Yeah, it's very clear. And then you're fine. Yeah. That's true. Um, That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And Careful hey. when you give the gift over here. <laughs> yeah. That's That's right. an awkward right. situation. No. Okay. I know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, okay. So I second it, but not without. Emotional reservation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'll have to, you know, I'll continue to think about this one too. But I mean, yeah, I, that is something I had not thought about. You know, is that even after students walked, you know, graduated, <sighs> and there's still potential ways in which a teacher might be influenced by a, by a, particularly a large, you know, a large gift. Um, okay. Um, so, how about Ed? Any further discussion or comments yeah. about this? Good motion? discussion, you guys. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Okay, that motion passes. So, uh, Madam Clerk, for the day, we will uh, kick these all, uh, we'll reject all these uh, requests for gift exceptions with the exception of the uh, the raffle one, right? Because that, that, I don't really think that's a gift. Okay, very good. Let's take a look at what's next. I yes. Um, I still think probably a letter to uh, the school administration sure. would be appropriate to explain this, but I'm wondering, Terry. Um, you might be more eloquent than I. You have been our gift person, or Ted either. Uh, if one of you would help me do that, sure. Yeah. Uh, because I think we we at least owe the school explanation to explain that we didn't mean to that fifty to be stretched as an exception. Yeah, because but in some sense it means, that we're, not going to, it means yeah. that we're really not going to be granting exceptions. Yeah, so we're not going to grant right. exceptions. That, yeah. that you're so right. Since that language is, that is may in is in the code, it, it is at our discretion. But we should probably let them know that that basically, if you're not within one of these safe harbors, there's too many contingent and speculative details that make it really impossible to say that the gift is consistent with the principle otherwise. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Let's take a look. Um, what else do we have? Do we have notice of intent to respond to public solicitation? Do we have any notice? No, all the rest are not. Okay. Uh, let's see. So what time is it? It is 1117. Well, let's see. Uh, new business, our next ethics and election committee meeting. I, I think the, the helic thing should be pretty short oh. because... Uh, yeah, M Michelle's going to come in in 10 minutes. Do oh, you think that'll be quick, quick? I think so. Okay. Well, you know why I think it's going to be quick? Because we basically talked about it last time. Okay. And what I tried to do was and we have that here. everything that everyone talked about last time, and I kind of pinned everyone down about that. Okay. So I, I, I'm sure all of us have forgotten what we I don't think so. Uh, they are ordering food. Oh, they are? I'm going to see if Anybody, I found the candy. <laughs> Anybody want candy? Like that that. Uh, I don't want to be stuck. Oh, right. Do you remember this, Terry? Oh, 
Oh, I and sure did. You know, this, this, oh, almost, yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> almost wound up uh, in the mm. final exam for my uh, <laughs> professional <laughs> ethics student. I almost, I was halfway putting in. I'm like, deal, kill me if I do this. <laughs> I wanted to walk in here and say, my students say this is outrageous, but no. <laughs> so what I tried to do, we came in here last time with a version, ran it past you guys, and um, realized that we needed to do some further work on it, but what we talked about before we left last night time was putting these three specific examples in. So it really kind of came from the discussion that we had with everyone. I mean, we, we kind of hammered this up together, and I just... Put it down on paper for and the last version that uh, Lisa and I presented to you had tons of detail to mm -hmm. it, yeah. and we just and we chopped it down. You oh, chopped it. Chopped I remember. It. We, yep. yeah. You destroyed it. So <laughs> we're we back to it. You generic principles. No, it's bomb good. in the middle. And I think we specifically discussed. I, I think it was Terry or somebody wanted that overt pressure. We wanted that in. Uh, some of these came from. Mm -hmm. I think it was the Commonwealth of Massachusetts mm -hmm. example that. Kind of D had, I think, forwarded to me and that we were working off it. That had a lot of really good material in it, but it was really wordy. So I'm trying to keep it succinct. Oh, subject to the approval. So they have to get approval of the supervisor, the ethics officer, and the board of ethics? Oh boy. Did I, did I read you that may wrong? solicit donations subject to the approval. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, it has to be the supervisor. They have to go chain of command. Right. Uh, but would it be, could it be is the ethics plan? officer or the board, or of the board of ethics? You have to go through yeah. three or right. yeah. So yeah. it has to be, so it would be and uh, either the ethics board or the Or, right, or and, and either the, the ethics the or the board of ethics. Right. Either. Well, I guess at least well, getting, a, a getting the one. board's approval would if someone later filed a notice yeah. of potential violation, only the board's approval would really right. grant them the immunity yeah. from the immunity. From that. But I tell that to people. Yeah. Okay. I okay. mean, so. so how do we want uh, to say it? And I think the first sheet that came out, I would definitely send to you immediately. Because there's no immunity if it's the just, just the ethics officer. Yeah, because notice it says except where, and then there's yeah. our principle, yeah. right? So in other yeah. words. You know, if, if it violates that principle, you, you right. can't get approval, right. actually, you know, or the approval doesn't really grant you anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so only right. the determination that it's not violating the principle, and the only body that can really make that official mm -hmm. determination um, with finality is this board. That's right. Is that subject to approval? We had before, by the way, just subject to approval of the appropriate supervisor. And mm -hmm. in discussion with Everyone last time around, we somehow added the ethics officer in the board. But is that just kind of a is that causing confusion? That subject to approval. Well, if, is it if, where it's located, or is it just if we're going to have subject yeah. to approval, and if we're going to yeah. require right. it be the board of ethics, then we don't need right. the last um, clause of that of the state, except right, because where that's that our because that's our determination. Yeah. Yeah. you can't well, get. But it's the standard for the public. Well, and that's right. So maybe yeah. it should come elsewhere, and maybe it should right. be maybe like, like the standard spot. is, yeah. you know, yeah, you know no solicitation may be made if yeah. da 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 I mean, uh, Any David solicitation requires right. approval. Yeah. Well, that's right. well, that becomes the general yeah. rule. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But so let's take it out and move it, because I think the fact yeah. that David jumped on it yeah. right away tells me that he got lost in that. And, you know, I want people to understand yeah. the standard first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then procedurally, what they need to do maybe is a detail mm -hmm. later. Uh, one question: what, what is your definition of appropriate supervisor? I don't know. Well, it's you, okay. Take out the word appropriate. Let's just say a supervisor. Yeah. Uh, well, what is supervisor? Even that supervisor. I mean, supervisor is the right word. Uh, I mean, what do we we've d used a different word elsewhere? So Does everybody have a supervisor? Yes. Well, well do, but I mean, technically, what, what, why should I mean there are supervisors that are he's in charge of the janitor that's from the floor <laughs> here, you know? Right, right. Well, uh, or appropriate yes. manager. Yes, absolutely. No ethics training or whatever. Right. Yeah. So you know, if you said maybe you know, department maybe. head or. Ethics offer or you know, board of ethics, but uh, uh, well, this, this was me putting something in because I want internally they have to have an approval process. 
But, you know, before if they came to me, I would say they'd have to have it signed off anyway by some type of supervisor, and I'm going to know who they should have it signed off by. Yeah, no, you will. Yeah. No, it's like what you said earlier. Yeah. To the supervisor and either the ethics officer or the board of, or the board of ethics. Yeah. But, but mm -hmm. period. And then the rule would go ahead of that. Yeah, where do we want to put this part? You know, public service may solicit on behalf of the muni, except where, I mean, except I think we, except where the say, timing nature. Of the go ahead and take right. out the supervisor part of it. Right. Because right. if it's going to come okay. to me or you it's guys, gonna go I'm going to already know who to yeah, 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 yeah. If you wanted something in there, you could say department head. Well, Why? that's not always appropriate either. Yeah. We've got yeah. the assembly, and so let's just take it out yeah. because okay. for them yeah. to get through us, they have to have right. it anyway. Right. I'll make them have it. Yeah. No, that, and then they would know uh, to if they were seeking immunity, if they cared about that. They yeah, and I always tell them that. So, and if not, then they just go through you. If they want to run the risk, right? Mm -hmm. The rest of it, I think, I'm okay with. Because we, I remember we were discussing uh, one, two, and three a lot. You know, this rule does not apply to, to donations of ASD, subject to ASD's own policy and procedures. Well, other departments within the city have their, their own rules and procedures. I remember how this came up, but, but, yeah. but this is why, Ted, because, um, yeah, but see, again, I'm going to make them have a, I will know who their supervisor is, so they will yeah. already have had to gone, go there. Yeah. So that but, won't be taken uh, care I'm of. What I'm saying is, um, when I was the captain of the Uniform Field Service, I made a lot of community you know, so, you know, solicits mm -hmm. for uh, police substations, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, no rent and different things like that. And But there is standards in, in the police procedure, mm -hmm. uh, how you do that and, and what you write up and all of that. So uh, I never wrote fill out any form for the, because it was, you know, to the benefit of the city as a, as a whole. Uh, so. I wonder, I mean, if, yeah, I wonder, Lisa, if, if it's quite the right language to say the rule doesn't apply to ASD. Yeah, ASD right. couldn't make a policy that's more lax than this, right? I mean, and right. so they might, their policies can be more stringent right. than this. Right. So in a sense, our rule does apply, I, you know but it's not the... Jerry, it's, can't, I'll tell you why. Because okay. yeah. they, they live on donations, and they have business partners, mm -hmm. and they have this, and, and they have the boosters clubs mm -hmm. and all that. I mean, they have this incredible structure mm -hmm. of getting money. That we don't do, and so right. we need to yeah. we need to stay we a million miles away different. from them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so you're saying no, yeah, no, no, no. we really do want to carve oh, so yeah, out we want full exceptions. Well, Carrie, this that. came up. I mean, Dee had a couple of yeah. examples when we were exploring how to write this. We got on the phone with was it Jeff? No, was Whiting. It Whiting. Was was it Jeff Whiting or Dave Whiting? I forget. The, Whatever that the, guy. One of the guys. Over one there. of the guys that we dealt with in one of our, our volleyball yeah. games. Yeah. And we, he kind of blew us away. Yeah, oh, elaborate, it's unbelievable. How yeah. elaborate the process was for dealing with, and we wanted to make it clear that this did not intend to kind of supersede that process. Yeah, no. Maybe it doesn't okay. need to be in here. I don't know. Um, I think it does because ASD it was is a part deal. of mm -hmm. I, I, it's, yeah. But anyway, so that was why, because they yeah. are about 8 mi million miles ahead of us on this because they live and die by mm -hmm. donations and solicitations. And yeah, there, there are differences between we don't. us and them are not just little... It was interesting, tweets, can I say, Ted, that you guys did that. I didn't. I mean, I get this question all the time, like the administration, D, yeah. how, can we go to Costco to get food for a employee picnic? Yeah. And I'm always like, well, we don't have a policy on it. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that, you know, some yeah. people had already developed their own policy. Right. I can tell you, like Mike Abbott, the last yeah. municipal manager, he would have said no. So it's sort of interesting yeah. that... And, and, you know, this rule does not apply to solicitation of donations to ASD. Certain donations it wouldn't necessarily, you know, allow a teacher to go out and solicit stuff for, you know, so... I, you know, I couldn't speak to that. You might be but then, right, but, but I don't. But I don't then they, know. it's their world. So unless we say, that's a good that's question. So if a teacher solicited donations from students' parents and then got them, would they cease to be gifts and now they become that's so funny. solicited donations? 
but uh, you could say that the rule does not apply to solicitation of donations, which fall under, which fall under ASD's own policies and procedures. In other words, of those specific donations that fall under it, I think that's a right. good way to do it. Which yeah. fall under? Yeah. Isn't to, that to what those? which are subject to? Isn't that kind of the same thing? Mm -hmm. Whatever. I, I don't care. It's just semantics. Yeah. I no, I think you get rid of the comma. I think, I think right. isn't it one of those classic comma, cases? You yes. get rid of the comma and you change the meaning yes. of it. Yeah. It's an independent, it's no longer, I mean, it's a, it's a dependent clause. What you know, is yeah, yeah. it? It is. That's I love great. It. I love it's a that. dependent clause and an independent clause. Right. So right. You're basically saying that the types of solicitations this doesn't apply to are those that are subject to the policies yeah, and procedures. If, if, which you, which remove the, if you remove the comma, you're qualifying which solicitations are exempt. And it's oh, only going to be those. Oh, oh, if you I include see. the comma, then you're saying oh, all oh, ASD solicitations yeah. are oh, exempt. Exactly. Why? Yeah. Because yeah. they're covered. That well, is well, correct. Which always follows the comma. So or you, you could change make, it to if that. You, if you well, wanted that's to right. make that, yeah. yourself yeah. That's right. Oh, good point. You could say this rule does not apply to those solicitations. Those solicitation citations that are, you know, that fall under ASDs. Yeah. I understand that. So would it read something like this then? A public servant may solicit donations on behalf of the municipality, except where the timing, nature, uh, or the circumstances of the donation would cause a reasonable person to believe. Um, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Whoops. Yep, you're fine. Yeah, yeah okay, that. Fine. And then it would say, how about any solicitation is subject to the approval of the ethics officer and or the board of ethics, period? Yeah. Right, this is after the three enumerated. That would be after three. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. How does that sound? Read it one more time, David, because it was so good. Just your last, your line that you wanted any solicitation. Or uh, solicitation. Any solicitation all is subject. Yeah, any, yeah any or all uh, mm -hmm. any solicitation is subject to the approval of the appro uh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. of the ethics officer and. No or. Or the board of ethics. Or well, what if it goes through you and then to us? Well, but then if okay, but that's just all discretionary, right? Okay. right. Okay, all right. Remember, and logic or means at least one. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like any, an <laughs> subject to the approval of the ethics or shall be approved? Well, you just want to follow up with a comment, comment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to roll around. Like, yeah. I am a fuego. I, yeah, no. <laughs> I think it should go to, we to, to the ethics right board. <laughs> yeah, you know, to the ethics board and, or to the or. ethics officer and the ethics board. Every time. The reason being. I don't so, want them all coming here, though. Huh? I don't want them all coming here, though. I want her to be able to filter it through. Yeah, yeah but it, it's got to come somehow. She leaves tomorrow if we get a new Essex officer. And you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going to be a regular. She's not going to leave without properly chaining her. There'll be a new Essex officer. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she dies. A chain. Uh, right. Well, well, there we, we go. go. Say we're good. Yeah, you we're, can, we're, can you technically be our ethics officer? I mean, can I don't know. if there's a, ethics officer? Are you a deputy I'm, I'm ethics right. officer? I don't know I don't what we know. wrote in the there's code. A, there might be an issue. But can I say, Ted? Um, yeah. I think so business I moves faster than we do, so and you I get I, I get tons of little this. things yeah, and anything work. gray I'm going to send to you right. guys. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. But it just moves. Government, <laughs> we get too much of this. Um, <laughs> that I just yeah, I'm, I'm happy with an and or yeah. you know or you know, yeah, logically or fine you know yeah. if you want an and or yeah, you're a little worried about all the If the ethics officer feels there is a problem, technically it should be or then it. Both. Oh, so yeah, isn't, that, isn't that the way it's supposed to be written? Actually? I'll tell you what the instead of and slash or it should be, it should be ethics officer or the board or the board of ethics or both. I read okay. that somewhere. Nice. Well, I guess that you know. I mean, and logically you wouldn't use that. It is redundant. Yeah, yeah. but, but it is know, clear. We want to eliminate the <laughs> slash. Yeah, you know. Most people are pretty weak on their logic, so it's I you know, know, that's true. People are pretty weak on their independent <laughs> Yes, they are. Oh, that's true, yeah, and I, and I always, I I always forget to put a comma yeah. before which. Um, we have to Lisa, make for, sure. uh, can I, can I make a couple more uh, yeah. comments, not to wordsmith it Absolutely. too much? But after uh, yeah. one and two, um, or I guess after one, then, oh, I, I see the or after two. Mm -hmm. Should there be an or after one? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So are you saying it's or applies to all? Is it you, any if any one of these yes. three circumstances exist? Which is no what we want to say, right? So we so need, it's so blank, it's blank, blank, or yeah. Mm, I think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. As is. And then for number one, do we want it to be the outcome of the solicitation? Mm -hmm. The judgment. 
Keep in mind that it's except for the timing, nature, other circumstances of the donation would cause a reasonable person to believe that the right. judgment may be influenced by the it's, it's an appearance issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By the solicitation. By the solicitation. I'm okay with you. I do. I see. Or do you want to say a public servant may solicit a donation? Say what? Do you want to say a donation? Or, I'm, I'm, never mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's the timing, nature, and service of the mm -hmm. donation would cause a reason for believe that the oh, judgment of anybody has been influenced by that <coughs> donation, right? Or lack thereof, oh, right? It's not the saying. solicitation. Oh, okay. I, I, might, I might not be particularly yeah, yeah, influenced yeah. by the oh, fact yeah, that we yeah, yeah. asked BP to right. fund yeah. the picnic this right. year. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I am going to be influenced right. by whether yeah. they gave us money or if or they not. didn't no, give right. us money. It's the right. donation, not the solicitation. Yeah. You're right. Well, what if there's no donation? It could be a negative. That's right. Yeah. And that's why I say outcome of the yeah. solicitation, you know, or something like yeah. the donation yeah, yeah, yeah. or lack thereof, right? So where do you want me to put down? I hear your point. It's a good point. What's a good way to put it? I think either way would be fine. By influenced by the outcome of the solicitation or mm -hmm. influenced by the, the donation yeah. or lack thereof. Or well, it could or be donation result. or solicitation, which is be inclusive. What's that? Donation or solicitation. In other words, if there's no donation, it's just the act of the solicitation. Yeah, the act of the solicitation. I, the outcome of sounds difficult for the public to get what you're talking about. Right, right, Versus right. just donation or solicitation. Put them both in there. I think the solicitation needs to be in there. I think it's the act of soliciting that can be kind of sticky. Well, it's the act of soliciting that's, yeah. that's ethically in question, but right, what we're right. worried about is the influence that the result yeah, of the solicitation is going to have on a public mm -hmm. servant, right? That did they give the donation? Did, in other words, how did yeah. how did BP respond to the solicitation? Did they donate or not? That's what is the sticky point, right? Because that might re that's what's going to influence the fact right. that how someone asked I, is not going to influence anybody. How it's going to. How about if I'm a supervisor and I'm asking all my employees to like pony up money for? Isn't it just the act of that, that solicitation in and of itself? No, she's supposed to be coming in. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that, that's what we're, that's the, the action in question, but what's going to make it ethically problematic is, is the supervisor going to be potentially influenced by the fact that the employees yeah. donated right. or didn't yes. donate? Yes. Since in most cases it, they would, yes. that's what makes it ethically offensive. Right, so right. It's, it's the, it's the result. downstream yes. effect is yeah. the result of the solicitation. How about results of the solicitation? Yeah. Is that clear uh, enough? That, that's clear enough to yeah. me. Does yeah. that work for you, Dean? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah, the result yeah. of the solicitation. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. And, um... Well, isn't that pretty much covered under, under two? Well, two is coerciveness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah. By, by pending or anticipating decision yeah. of the municipality. Well, one's broader, right? I mean, yeah, one right. does not require that you have a pending right, right, decision right. before the municipality. You could just say that any public servant's going to be influenced in their official decision making. And I think no, that's right. So I mean, like, I think you can imagine we ask BP for money. BP doesn't have something directly before us, but you know, right. the mayor is making a decision that relates to the oil industry <laughs> generally, right? Mm -hmm. um, this right, is right. Michelle McNulty, our new planning director. Okay. We're just finishing up another matter. Okay. So, um, and the two is more specific, but it addresses a very specific concern, which is the coerciveness, which we drew from the Massachusetts no, we wanted to do So it's narrower, you might say, but it's also directly addressing well, the specific issue. Yeah. That's why it's, That's why it's, it's in there. It's in there. Right. It's not super specific. And I can't remember why we wanted the overt pressure one. Uh, I, I saw it at the end of the table. Been, I think it, it was may have been Kelly. somewhere down there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought it was I, two I that I wanted. You did want two. Yeah, oh, two you wanted over three. I think you wanted three. Did I want yeah. three as well? But I'm okay with that. I mean, sure it was I will tell you that someone here wanted over at pressure, yeah. and I wrote this right after I left the meeting, yeah. so it was fresh in my mind. Yeah. Clearly a lot fresher than it is at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm fine keeping it in. This, fine, this is yeah. common in most solicitation yeah. policies. Mm -hmm. so. okay. That's where we got okay. it from yeah. originally, and someone something. liked it. Okay. 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 Might be helpful. Mm -hmm. So does that give you enough guidance on where we're at? Yeah. You did we come great. up with something? You did. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. That That's you can <laughs> yeah. Actually, I don't know if you see it again. If, <laughs> if you want, you can just go straight. Okay, okay. okay. that's fine. Are you okay then, with that? Thanks, you guys. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome.
Okay. All right. Uh, we have our guests. Can we take a two-minute break? I'm just going to run Okay. Okay. Let's take a two-minute break.